Y'all know what time it is. Cut those volumes up. It is time. It is Blazing Takes. I, of course, am Rick Blaze. This is the number one show in Sim World, period. And I'll join you day two. My guy Yells is in the building. Yells, how are you doing? I'm on the road, of course, but Yells is in the building. How are you doing, Yells? I'm good, man. How slick are you going to keep doing that with me on the show? My God. Wow. Face the nation. Huh. Huh. <laughs> Hey, man. The I'm number one show face. at 4 p.m. We're, we're all we're the number one show in your face. I'm going to talk about your front of your face, not behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You got to respect it. All right. Yeah. So let's jump Let's jump into something. I actually kind of want to piggyback a little bit off what the morning show, what you guys did uh, this morning. Talk about uh, players, but I want to go, I want to extend it. I want to talk about the players. Everybody knows, you know, stats. And I want to go beyond stats for a minute because everybody has stat. They get hard on for stats. I want to go besides that, beyond that. I want to talk about those players who make an impact on their team, who make an impact on the game, that the stat line will never pick up. You will never see it in the stats. Um, as a matter of fact, later on during the season, I'm going to start breaking down some of these types of plays. But for now, I want to talk about those players, a player that come to mind that you don't see it in the stats, but his impact on the game is way more than what the stat sheet would say. Hmm. Okay. All right. Let you, me got, you got you got somebody in mind? Yeah, I do. I, I have a few of them in mind. Um, I may be going in alphabetical order here. The first one that comes to mind, I'm going way far east. Way, okay. way, way far east. This guy had a lot of people on his team. Like you said, people fall in love with the stats. You know what else they fall in love with? The pretty plays and the highlights and the step backs. They don't even look at the percentages involved with that. Um, that's what they look at. But this guy was on a team. Look at how I'm setting it up, too. Uh, this guy was on a team that a lot of people had expectations for once they saw them, um, once they saw him hooping. Um, and then there were even greater expectations placed upon him once people really saw a few games of it. Um, and the expectations are, I would say, through the through the roof for him next season as far as being an international squad. So, yeah, I'm starting there. Um, but the player on this squad that was really the glue was Jin Son Ding on Simworld Asia Pacific. Um, people look that guy, and when you talk about he was a leader, um, and, and I, I'm thinking that's what we're talking about here is being a leader. He was a yeah. leader in regard to being able to keep everybody. Kai Duby doesn't get to run all over the court and take the shots he takes unless Jin Son Ding is out there boxing out saying, Hey, take those shots, I got your board. Uh, JD Reyes is not able to clear get straight to the rim unless Jin Son Ding says, Hey. Get that ball out of Kai Newby's hands. Now I'm going to set these screens and I'm going to roll with you. And then ultimately, Stephen George doesn't get to be the monster he is on the inside or that he was on the inside blocking shots unless Jen Son Ding says, hey, you go contest. I'm going to grab these boards. I got and you could see him on the court communicating last year. Um, he did all the dirty work and whatever box needed to be filled um, that wasn't being filled that time. It was him. And then when it's time to get dirty and play defense, he did it. And I know those are not a lot of things that stick out on the stat sheet um, at all. But they're also their leadership things. Those are things that he had to be in those players' right. ear, and he was willing right. to fill whatever void needed to be filled at any time. So that's my first one. Um, okay. Second, second person that comes to mind. Really, it's the first person that comes to mind. But I wanted to, uh, I wanted to give some highlight to Jin Son Ding. That man, the dude can hoop. He can hoop. He's he's the guy that you go to the court. You don't see any highlights from. Uh, he may finish the game with four points, seven boards, a block, wins. steal. His team wins every game. His team wins, <laughs> and you notice everybody's like, yeah, yeah, I want him on the court. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> More importantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's running with me. So that guy. So I wanted to make sure I gave him his shine before we get to all the flashy and all the loud. Right. Um, this next guy, he's flashy. He's loud. Um, but he's also gets it done. He's a leader. He's an absolute leader. And that's big flex himself. Flex him up. Trey Hyman. Um, I think I think he's a big time leader. Um, he's vocal with his team. He keeps spirits up. He's always, you know, from what I hear, all his teammates that he's had um, and that he has currently. He's like he's up early. He's like, yo, let's hit the gym. Let's hit the gym. And I think that's one of been one of Coach Pope's uh, biggest recruiting assets has been Trey Hyman. Also, um, we hear he's the one. That he's just as active, if not more active, than some of the coaches yeah. in Sim World Prep <laughs> yeah. on the recruiting trail, on the let's get to work trail. And you see it during the games. He's been willing to step aside when need be um, and step up when need be. Um, so I don't have to dig into that one too much. I think he's an absolute leader. Um, 
And then the last one, this one, this one here, you know, people, people may have a lot of different thoughts on this one. Um, I, I could go an easy route. There's someone that I, that I feel very inclined to say, but I'm not going to say that guy. Um, but the, the other route that I will go, and I'm, all, I'm going early on with all of these. Um, <laughs> I am. Uh, I think, <laughs> I think Isaiah James is a big time leader. Um, and I okay. say that and I'll take my time or I'll be brief is what I was going to say. Um, he was clearly a leader on that best, co uh, or excuse me, on the BC East championship run. He came in and set the tone defensively. He got to work on grabbing boards. He would, he did whatever was needed to be needed to be done on that team during that championship run. Um, he kept, t he kept his teammates accountable. He kept spirits up. Um, he defended his team. He spoke up for his team when they don't get notoriety, but he played the game well as far as how he communicated with the media, with his team. Um, and then some of the most, the, the biggest leadership factors that I saw from him was, hey, BC East has a culture. We're all about winning. And that culture is stay out of the media unless we're doing it by the ways of wins. And when his brothers got yeah. into all that drama, he came there to support his brothers in the right way, and he backed out um, before it put any negative light on him, his team, or even his brothers. He said what needed to be said, and he stepped out, but he made sure that he showed the leadership of being a good brother, being a good teammate, uh, being a great player um, all around. So the leadership he showed there all around I thought was amazing. Hey, I can't be mad at none of those guys that you said. Uh, those are all really good examples. As some, of the guys, one of the, some of the guys I was thinking about, one of them uh, is not – is one of the guys that you mentioned. It's not his blood brother, but you know they're pretty close as friends, and that's Corey Yam. Mm. I, when you watch him, he's the main reason why I have some concern about my Showtime this season. Uh, someone mentioned it last year when Yams was off of the court, defensively or just as a team, this became a soft team by default. He was literally the, the enforcer of the team. And, and not only that, but him on the court. I'm looking at the little bitty stuff. I'm looking at the picks, the screen, knowing how to get the ball out to the open player. Those things that making the right decision, switching on demand defensively, even though that's not your guy. Knowing that I need to switch here so that I can hold him down until the help comes. Like those smart plays is what doesn't go in the stat sheet, but what makes guys a complete player, what make guys guys that you have to have on your team because they're just winners. You know, a lot of those shots that we seen Brady shoot last uh, last year, a lot of those shots he got on his own. But some of those shots, guess how he got that open? <laughs> somebody got to set that screen. Somebody got to set that pick. Yeah. Somebody got to get that. You know, so I think uh, I want to give my bigs, some, my bigs some love. So I'm going to go two bigs. I went Gam, the second big, I'm going to go. I'm going to go big Victoria. Another big who his stat lines are always pretty good, but what he does on the court and what he allows his teammates to do, a lot of people don't see. Yo, as a guard, you can get beat, and it's kind, it's going to be okay a lot of the time because big big turns are going to make you look better. It's going to clean the mess up for you. Once, you're, once the guard beats you off the dribble, gets to the lane, he's going to clean up the mess for you. That's what he does. When he sets a pick, or DJ Wagner, whoever, you're a pick, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you done been puck. You done. He says to pick. You done been puck. <laughs> <laughs> if he picks, you puck. <laughs> that's that's the name of it. That's the, here we go. That might be the name of this episode. Uh, I you, think so. He pick. You puck. <laughs> <laughs> he sets a pick on a screen. It's easy pickings because you're not getting around that big guy. That's super super big. And imagine what the team he has this year. Can you imagine uh, shooting McGavin and he's setting a pick? That's a wide open. Oh, my God. Can you think about that? Um, just from a Kamari Ward, just coming out a big a big pick by Vic, that's a wide open jump because you're not getting around, big fella. You get so, you getting a lot of uh, a lot of good phrases. A big pick by Vic. I, I better hear that, commentators. I better hear that <laughs> multiple times, many times throughout the season. Big pick by Vic. Oh, yeah. Big pick by Vic. So I want to give the big fella some love. I know these stats are probably good. I know their stat lines are not always great, uh, but they do a lot of intangibles that make sure they're on winning teams every time they play. If you go back to the pickup games in season one before the season one started, when those players were able to just pick what team they wanted to join uh, in the pickup games, 
a lot of those names we mentioned, their teams never lost first round. Really? Because because of the plays that those guys play. So yeah, that's yeah. my two cents. But before before you leave that topic, because I think I touched on on uh Sim World today one of these days. Uh what you said about Big Vic setting the pick uh, and people being pucked after that. Um, and, and you talking about Shooter McGavin, Hair Canada coming off those screens. Jay Lash was going to look pretty nice being able to facilitate off those. Um, mm-hmm. And we're, we're, mm-hmm. we're, na- we're naming the guys that aren't named Cooper Flag. Imagine what Cooper right. Flag is going to do with some of those screens or when someone's trying to box out of uh, Ilgowskis or whatever. My God, it's going to be scary. That's a really scary right. team, man. <laughs> it's all your- Pray to all your Catholic gods. <laughs> Pray to Mary, Joseph, oh, Saint boy. Paul, Saint Vincent, all the saints. All you get your rosary, break, get your rosary beads. Take your, take your prayers. Those these boys, that, that front court, that whole team, that front court especially is going to be bananas and pajamas. All right, we've been a long time on that time. We're going to go rapid fire with these niggas. Matter of fact, I'm going to switch. I'm going to throw a curve. I'm going to throw a curve right now. Mm. Here we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna do. Would you rather have? Yes. Yeah, this is gonna be our second topic and our pink and rose segment. All right, after one. Would you rather have? Would you rather have seven NBA championship rings and it would have made twenty million dollars in your career, or zero championship rings and would have made forty million dollars in your career? Oh man, I, yeah, the first one. 20, 20 million. Look, yeah, I got, I got number one. Can can I speak on it? Can I speak on it? You, you may have a different opinion. I don't, man. I got, I gotta, you gotta have some wins. Like I can't zero. Hell no, nah. I can't do it. Zero. It, it, why you're competing? So when I look at sports, I, I number one, that's the reason why I don't like James Harden and a few other people. People that play competitive sports, and you can tell that they're not there for the competition part. It it it, it drives me mad. I compete with my family at the dinner table. Like who's gonna finish right. food first? And they they look they they're they're nine and six, and they've been competing. They've been competing for about three years. It's everything's a competition. If you're not competing, and I stand by this, I don't I don't know who I'm alienating here, but if you're not competing. Um, daily, just let know that you're not winning. <laughs> you, there's a winner, and there's a loser. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> compete. So for me, I gotta at least have the wins. And then I would say the 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 last part of that that gets me on my soapbox just for a brief second is the difference between twenty million and forty million is just wits about how you go and spend your money. So forty million is more money, but twenty million, twenty million, two million, one million. You can you can work those things if you work a plan. So give me the twenty right, million, so give me a legacy and the seven rings. If I move that number from forty to a hundred million, then now it's now it's the real choice. Now, all right, let's move, let's move to go. Rick, 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 I got it. I got an answer. I got an answer. This answer will take five seconds. I have to sit down and do some math. <laughs> it doesn't immediately change, but I got to sit down and do some math and see how much time it costs me. All right, here we go. Would you rather stay? Would you rather? The girl is a 10, but she has halitosis. Ugh. Or the girl is a 5. She treats you like a king. Come on, that's easy money. That's easy money. Hey, we, we, I think we've all had that situation. That 10, like when halitosis, bro, you can I know what you're saying. You can just turn her around. You can smell halitosis from behind. <laughs> 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 I, I need to be treated like it's king while I go find the tin with good breath. <laughs> I didn't find the tin. <laughs> you know Whoa. what? That's it. That's our show. Hey, that's our show for the day. We're going to end on that. Go ahead. So, we're fellas, get you a five so you have to find the tin with good breath. Let's go send this because let's put it in the chat. Talk about some unsung guys on the court whose stat line doesn't. Good doesn't fully say I'm putting the awesome team. Hey, and would you rather give us your answer, man? Y'all have a good weekend. We out. We do this again. We'll be back Monday. Don't forget the game. Tune in. Two o'clock tomorrow, Eastern Time. Unsigned hype. Be there or be swept. <laughs>